Hello, my name's Sarah Morris. Uh, I started my company Black Dog DNA about two years ago and I do DNA tests on mixed breed dogs. Every single dog, every single human, every plant has DNA. What this test can do is find out if you've rehomed a mixed breed dog or you've even got suspicions that what you bought wasn't what you bought. A DNA test will tell you exactly which breeds are in the mix and in what proportion. Even if there's only a little bit of a tiny trace of something else in there, the test will pick it up and you can be absolutely sure which breeds are in there. I have quite a lot of customers who have bought a dog. You're told that it's one of these new designer dog breeds. You get a little fluffy puppy, it's very sweet. When it grows up, you have some suspicions. Very often, if you have your doubts, a DNA test can tell you whether indeed you have got what you paid for, might just not look like it, or whether you've been sold a crossbreed. The database is set up and it was uh, produced by Mars Veterinaries, a very, very large scientific company. A scientist called Dr. Neil Fretwell had done research at a doctorate level to discover the dog genome. They've got more than about 200 breeds on the database now. In order to get one DNA profile for a breed, they'd need to take samples from about 80 or 90 dogs of that breed. So say for instance a Labrador, the working Labradors would have a very slightly different genetic signature to a show Labrador. So they'd take 80 or 90 Labradors that were unrelated, take DNA samples from each dog and specifically say this is unique to a Labrador and they do that for more than 200 breeds from the American Kennel Club, the UK Kennel Club and Australian as well. This is the most accurate test on the market today. Um, they can match 99% of all samples that, that come in as well. Very occasionally when say somebody has rehomed a dog from Romania, from India, from Iraq, you're not likely to find any known breeds in that dog. Um, what it then does is it estimates the next nearest breed to it. So you might get a, a seemingly unlikely result, but the result does reflect the true ancestry of your dog. And don't forget, DNA goes back millions of years, not just a couple of generations. There are some very strong genetic traits that usually come out in mixed breed dogs. The brindle colouring is one of those. If it's got brindle genes in the ancestry, black is a very, very dominant colour too. It's likely to come out because you only need the black gene to be in one of the parents for it to come out in the puppies. A recessive gene, something that's fairly unusual, for instance, would be the black and tan colouring you see in Rottweilers, Dobermans, both parents have to carry that black and tan gene for it to come out in the other puppies. It might not be black and tan colouring itself, but it's carrying the gene, it'll pass it on to puppies. Some colours are more frequent than others in genetics. What you need to, to do a DNA test is a cell, a living cell from that animal. The usual way, the most easy way you do it is from the cheek cell. It's not the saliva, it's the cells on the inside of the cheek. So what you get when you buy a swab from Black Dog DNA is a little kit with two sterile cheek swabs. They're tiny little brushes like a cotton swab up and down on the inside of the dog's cheek to get some cells. Dry it, air dry it for a few minutes, pop it back in the, in the sleeve, post it off to the lab and they will analyze the DNA. It takes about a week to get to the lab the results come back to me about two to three weeks later. So the maximum it would be is about a calendar month for the full results to find out which breeds are in your dog. It's a completely painless test. This kind of test is, is not cruel or invasive at all, up and down on the inside of the dog's mouth that you can do at home. Some other DNA tests that your vet can do for inherited diseases, all sorts of other tests, can involve a blood sample that goes off to the lab, a different sort of test. This test is painless, you do it at home yourself. The results come back um, as to which breeds and in what proportion. It doesn't say which is the father, which is the mother. 
it's really a range if you like the way i express it level one is more than 75 percent it's usually a pure breed dog um, that parents and grandparents were uh, a pure breed um, level two say if your dog was two level twos that would be a first cross between two dogs 50 50 50 to 50 percent so down to level three level four when you wouldn't necessarily see any of the traits in those breeds unless it was quite a strong genetic trait um, and level five is in the mix you're unlikely to see anything but it's there and 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 quotable anyway this is sandy she was rescued from some travelers when she was about six months old um, you really can't see from looking at her you really can't see what what she is i suspect that i suspected that she was a very very mixed up dog with quite a few breeds in there and uh, sandy is the dog that i've done the dna test for so sandy's results came back as um, the two largest breeds um, at grandparent level one was a jack russell terrier and one was a labrador retriever Jack Russells are very varied. They can be any colour, any coat length, any leg length. That's why they're not in the kennel clubs. It's a very, very mixed breed, but a Jack Russell Terrier and a Labrador. The other next one in the list at about level four, so we're talking about 15 or 20% grandparent level maybe, was a miniature poodle. Now, you know Labradoodle puppies, the poodle coats can come out wiry, wavy, long, short. There are so many genes that can make a dog uh, look a certain way. So Poodle is in the mix there. And a little bit at the end, level five, so that's about 10% of a cardigan Welsh Corgi. One of my passions as a trained behaviorist is when you're looking behavior problems in a dog, you look at what its natural behavior should be. So for millions of years, people have been breeding dogs because of what they could do for them rather than what they look like. So these behaviors are very, very hardwired in dogs. So the Jack Russell Terrier, which was one of the prominent breeds in Sandy, Jack Russell Terriers have a very strong chase instinct. They were bred to catch vermin. If you are wanting a dog to help you out on a farm, this behavior is very hardwired. So I would expect Sandy to be very, very motivated to want to chase moving objects, to be very aroused when she hears squeaks. It's not a 100% Jack Russell, but that behavior would be in there. Labrador retrievers, their natural behavior isn't to bite and kill. It's the same sort of behavior, but is to hold on to something and carry it. So I would expect Sandy to have quite a good retrieve instinct, to pick up things, to bring things to you. It's a natural instinct for retrievers just to want to mouth things, to constantly have things in their mouth. I would expect that behavior to be there in Sandy as well. As a behaviorist, you now know what kind of toys she might like, what kind of training she might like to keep her happy, what kind of activities. How you, can, how you can give Sandy a happy life, now knowing what her ancestry is. Sandy's owner have told me that Sandy is conflicted between either chasing after a tennis ball and wanting to kill it and pull it to pieces and eat it, or, as you see now, just holding it in her mouth. So this is really interesting. This is a good sign that a Labrador genetics, wanting to hold things is there, but don't know whether you just want to hold it and retrieve it or whether you want to kill it and eat it. So these are the behaviors that Sandy is displaying here. On Sandy's health and personality profile, we're listing the inherited illnesses that can come. So with Labrador retrievers, they're very prone to hip and elbow dysplasia. They can suffer from an eye disorder, progressive retinal atrophy, hereditary cataracts. They can get heart disorders. Inherited illnesses for Jack Russells, they can possibly get dislocation of the kneecap, patella luxation. They can inherit eye diseases or deafness. There's a disease of the hip joints called leg perthes. 
Um, and some dogs suffer with an eye disorder called primary lens luxation. These are a list of some of the inherited illnesses that can come with those breeds. Not always, but sometimes. This lovely little dog I met a couple of years ago. The results came back. This was a cross between an English Springer Spaniel and a Putty Basset Griffon Vendée. Spaniels were bred to hunt and search, use their noses and seek. Basset, generally the Basset family, are very, very strong scent hounds. So my advice to the owners of this dog would be to work very, very hard on your recall. When a dog like this goes out and about and finds a scent, if you don't have a good recall, it'll be off. Nothing else will be as exciting as that smell on the wind. So it's important with a dog like this that you have a really, really good recall and that you satisfy those instincts. Lots of searching games, scent work games, hiding little bits of food around the house, around the garden, so that those instincts are satisfied. So knowing what its ancestry is can really help you give that dog a very happy life. This little dog, I love the look of it. Sometimes with genetics, you just get the head of one dog on the body of another. This was a Basset Hound crossed with a Bedlington Terrier. So again, Basset Hounds have a very, very strong scenting instinct. Nose down, follow a scent, nothing else in the world matters. Bedlington Terriers is a very small, very fast, feisty sight hounds. They will see a movement and they will want to chase it. So you've got two very, very strong instincts in this dog. One of them is wanting to chase something and go and kill it. The other one is just following a scent. So you can incorporate types of games that would satisfy this type of dog if you knew what its test, what its DNA was. If you wanted to get your dog DNA tested, my company is called Black Dog DNA. There are two options. The basic service, you will get a certificate of ancestry which says exactly which breeds and in what proportion. You get a health and personality summary, so a little bit of general knowledge about what the breed was bred to do, what sort of personality it has, and quite importantly, which are the inherited illnesses that come with those dogs. Mixed breed dogs do get inherited diseases, but less often if you've got a mixed breed dog, sometimes you get something called a hybrid vigor. So the resulting dog is bigger, stronger, healthier. Um, genetics is refreshed like that. So you can get, when you get the test from me, a certificate of ancestry, health and personality profile, the second service I offer is a silver service. It's more comprehensive. Again, you get the certificate of ancestry, the health and personality profile. On top of that, I write a training and behavior profile. So I will go into more detail as to what behavior you might expect from your dog, the sorts of games and activities you could do that would be really satisfying. And you can get both services on my website, which is blackdogdna.com. Mm -hmm.